Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for December 12th, and here's the latest of what's going on in the automotive industry. Last week, we reported that General Motors was going to switch suppliers for the batteries in the Chevrolet Volt. But GM tells AutoLine Daily that is not the case at all. Bloomberg News reported the supplier A123 was going to replace LG Chem, but GM says it's sticking with LG Chem for the Volt, while A123 will be supplying batteries for the all-electric version of the Chevrolet Spark. Despite becoming the largest automotive market in the world, the China Car News reports that collectively, China's domestic automakers are losing money. Excluding exports, their sales are all down for the year, and they're losing market share to foreign brands in China. And now some in China are calling on the government to stop allowing foreign automakers to form joint ventures. But since China is a member of the World Trade Organization, it cannot ban foreign companies from entering the market. Honda has some big announcements to make at the Detroit Auto Show next month. First up, it will reveal a concept vehicle that hints at the design direction of the 2013 Accord Coupe. But all we can show you for now is what the old one looks like. Then there are three, yes, three Acura unveils, a redesigned version of the RDX crossover, a new compact sports sedan concept called the ILX, plus a teaser for its revived NSX sports car. Honda, and especially Acura, have been getting clobbered lately, and both brands desperately need new product with better styling. And we can't wait to see what they've been working on. Well, it took a few years, but it's finally happening. BMW is following Mercedes-Benz and Audi into the four-door coupe sliver of the market. The 6 Series Grand Coupe has the CLS and the A7 in its sights, but you know, I do not know why these luxury brands persist in calling a four-door sedan a coupe. By definition, a coupe, or coupe, however you want to say it, but by tradition, it's traditionally been a two-door. You know, I think they want to trick sedan buyers into thinking they're buying a car that a younger person would buy. Younger than them, at least. And earlier in this year, BMW announced it was stepping up efforts to develop carbon fiber for use in its cars. Toyota is already manufacturing parts of its LFA sports car out of the material. And now General Motors is teaming up with Japanese company Teijin to develop carbon fiber technology to potentially use in its cars. Teijin has developed a new process to mass produce carbon fiber reinforced thermoplastic components in less than one minute. The fight over higher blends of ethanol and gasoline continues in Washington, D.C. According to the Detroit News, 70 members of the U.S. House of Representatives, both Democrats and Republicans, want to block the use of E15, or gasoline with 15% ethanol. Currently, there's about 10% ethanol in all gasoline used in the U.S. The House members say E15 will destroy engines and that further testing is needed. But the EPA has already approved its use earlier this year. Even so, the House voted to block the EPA from implementing E15 regulations. This new effort would include the block in a spending bill to fund government operations through next year. I'm Andrew Justice in Sutton's Bay, Michigan. And what do food, wine, and farms have to do with luxury cars? That story coming right up. Look at this. Bridgestone's using natural rubber, researching ways to enhance its quality and performance, and making their factories more environmentally friendly, producing products that save on fuel and emissions, and some that can be reused again, and promoting eco-friendly and safety driving campaigns. One team, one planet. Bridgestone. A few years ago, Buick as a brand was about as historic as this tiny Lake Michigan fishing village. 
But starting in 2007, GM retooled the brand, constantly feeding it new product like the LaCrosse, the Lucerne, and the Regal, equipped with the latest in technology, and in this case, great performance. So the GS represents the, the new height of the Regal lineup. This is a refined and responsible performance enthusiast car. We've got the higher output 270 horse turbocharged engine. We've got a sport tuned chassis. We've got unique front and rear fascias that give it a more aggressive look. Some unique interior appointments that uh, make this a very comfortable car, but also a very exciting car to drive. With its different driving modes, standard manual transmission, and sport seats, the Regal GS is really a driver's car. And it's products like this that explain why Buick is having such success nowadays, attracting new and different buyers. Um, what we really focus on is conquest, and the Buick brand overall is conquesting 41%. So four out of 10 customers that buy a Buick are new to, to General Motors or disposing of a non-GM product. And to us, that's the primary area of focus. Now, we're also selling to younger buyers. There are many 20, late 20-somethings and early 30-somethings that are buying Regals today. And so the product portfolio is such that it's an inviting, uh, beautiful sculptured exterior design with quiet, comfortable interiors. And in the case of Regal, that's more of a, a sporty performance expression within our portfolio. That portfolio has worked beautifully to attract a new buyer into the GM fold. With the family of the Regal, the Turbo, and now the GS, Buick finally feels like it has the roster to compete in the small mid-luxury segment. From Sutton's Bay, Michigan, I'm Andrew Justice for AutoLine Daily. Thanks for that report, Andrew. And that wraps up today's report. Don't forget, you can get all our reports via YouTube and Street Fighter. Check us out there, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.